Hey, internet people, I'm back to talk about this little $60 action camera that I bought off of Amazon last year, the Ape Man. I think that's how you say the name, or Ape Man, something like that. The Ape Man, Ape Man, 1080p HD, $60 action camera, like I said. I'll have a link to it on Amazon down below. Uh, I've had some good experiences using this since I bought it back in June, July last year, something like that. I've had it a while. But anyways, I used it on vacation in Maui. Uh, I've used it for the intended purpose that I bought it for to document uh, my podcast and various things having to do with that and my uh, other YouTube channel that I do uh, guitar reviews on and, and things like that. So I have some very real opinions about this camera. Uh, first of all, I'll say that it completely functions. For $60, this is a camera that turns on every time. I haven't had to glitch out or do weird things that make it unusable. It's just ready to go, it's convenient, it's easy to use the menus and navigate the whole camera and you know use the settings that it has available. Uh, the picture quality is okay. It's, you know, I think a professional videographer is gonna sneer at this pretty hard and be like, oh, that's not usable. But if you're a professional, you, know, you have a different budget in mind. I would totally recommend this to, you know, like a vacationing family that wants something they don't have to worry about. Like if you're going to a country or a place where maybe there's a high crime rate and you don't want to risk your $400 GoPro or some other, you know, expensive action cam, totally. Yeah, totally get this. Uh, the quality is going to be fine enough for documenting things. Uh, it's not going to be the most beautiful footage in the world, but like I said, it's good for documenting things. I used this in Maui to shoot uh, like snorkeling footage with my family. And I got to say, I think under, I think this thing does great underwater. I'm just going to say that. I think the, the kind of the contrasty nature of the pictures that you get from this works really well underwater. Um, it helps things that would normally be a little bit murky and washed out, uh, stand out pretty nicely. I'll be playing some footage here so you can see the footage that I got. Um, obviously it's 1080p and not 4k. Everything's going 4k these days, but $60, take it on vacation, you know, spend every day in the ocean with it. And even if it does get water in it and it stops working, it's like we used to spend more on film when I was a kid and, you know, like various, you know, film disposable cameras and stuff like that. $60. Can't argue with it. Now let's talk about the things about this camera that I don't like. One of the big reasons I bought this camera was to film uh, my podcast sessions, which can last about an hour. I typically use DSLRs, which cap out around half an hour of filming. Um, and so I was trying to find a cheap and, you know, kind of like lo-fi uh, way to document the podcast without having to buy a really expensive video camera. I'm going to say right now that this is not a good camera if you want to sync audio or any other footage to it. There's something about the frame rate of it or some sort of internal clock mechanism or something like that. It doesn't line up with anything else you do. Like if I was filming this right now, I'm using... A microphone down here it would be a pain in the butt to edit this because the footage would not sync up with the audio uh, and I can't even figure out a rhyme or reason it's like the the time fluxes back and forth so sometimes it'll be longer sometimes it'll be shorter and you have to literally go through like every 30 seconds like trimming things and you know customizing the time frame of it for it to fit with an audio signal or another camera or something like that. It's a major issue if you're using multiple cameras or using an external audio source. So like I said, documenting snorkeling, action camera stuff, you know, put it on your bike, go surfing with it, you know, all that sort of stuff where it's just one camera, no audio that you have to worry about. It's a great investment for 60 bucks. But if you're doing any sort of work where you're bringing in multiple sources of media and have to have them sync up, I can't use it for that, and I won't anymore. I, I don't rely on it. But, you know, for 60 bucks, I still think it's a great camera. Uh, do I have any other notes on it? No, I think... Oh, something I don't like about it that's inconvenient is when you bring the files over to your computer, your laptop, wherever you edit them, um, it chops them up, like, a lot. So you might have thought you were filming one consecutive shot for 
15 minutes, 20 minutes, for for 10 minutes, whatever, it's going to chop that file up into these little three minute segments. And, you know, you can drag and drop them into your editor of choice and stitch them all together, you know, fairly easy if you're familiar with, you know, editing and software. But if you're a hobbyist who doesn't do a lot of editing, you're looking for something to just drag and drop files and throw it onto Facebook or, you know, whatever really quickly, it's going to be really irritating to you to like have to figure out how to stitch together three files from a 15 minute video that you took. Um, and there's like no rhyme or reason for where it separates the files. It's like the internal processor can't keep up. And so it's like, oh, I got to cut this here so I can make a new file so that I can deal with it. I don't know. I don't know how this stuff works. I don't, I don't design circuits. I don't design cameras. I don't know the ins and outs. I'm a pretty casual guy when it comes to this technology. It either does what I want it to do, and I keep using it, or you know, I throw it in the box and stop using it. So anyways, I hope this was helpful to someone. Uh, I still say that this is a good buy if it fits your purposes. Action camera stuff, disposable camera for vacation, or for a shoot where a camera might get destroyed and uh, you don't want to worry about it. I used this for a shoot where we were throwing guitars off of a very tall bridge and having the guitars possibly land on the cameras. We didn't know, and having this around was a great option to have. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, um, you know, do all that fun YouTube stuff. You know you want to, and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to get more gear in and cover more things like this here in the future, and, you know, I'll play out by playing some clips of shots that I got with this. Later guys. Mm -hmm.